Oh, turtle time, oh, turtle time, we're so happy to watch Bravo shows with our little turtle cuties and Villa Rosa VIPs. We love you all and wish you happy holidays this time of year. Thank Thank you you for for being being with us for Turtle Turtle Time. time. Well, if Amy is a leaky pigeon, then why don't you consider me, Hey Hey, the chicken from Moana? Will that chicken ever learn? I don't think so. (laughs) I thought when I heard Cy say that, I said, an instantly iconic new catchphrase just came into the universe. (laughs) Everyone knows Hey Hey, the chicken from Moana. It's giving, if you had kids, you would understand. Oh, absolutely. It kind of strikes to the core of what this episode was about. It's true. Oh, man. Well, wonderful. I haven't seen Moana 1, and I have yet to see Moana 2. Yeah, I think I've seen Moana once, but I don't remember it. All right. Well, let us know, uh, Moana heads, what is that chicken like? Hey, hey. Uh, Amy pulled up a photo of him, and I saw that one eye, well, this is not, I hope this isn't offensive to him, but he looked cartoonishly like um, he was very... Should I say it? Brain dead. <laughs> I guess I, I'm just going to say it looked like he was uh, not the most intelligent chicken. Yeah. Just from the way that they kind of made his tongue hanging out of his mouth. So, um, yeah, I mean, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I We just watched Roni together, uh, and I'm reeling still from how bad it was because we had heard online from untrustworthy sources that it was a better episode than usual and yeah. we watched it and we were mouth agape at how dull it was yeah it ruined amy and i's vibe like <laughs> totally we came in here we were giggling we were having fun we were looking at christmas presents like we were cheerful uh, <laughs> being really like just like full christmas elves and then we decided to watch roni together and we had heard whispers that this one was a classic and it was so bad in a way that's kind of hard to define like well no it's not i guess it's not hard to define but it was so unpleasant yeah watching it and the reason why it's so unpleasant is because um they are having absolutely no fun being on the show together yeah and they really really are starting to dislike each other there's almost no real friendships left alchemy at all like no chemistry no fun even you know usually on housewives if they hate each other there's like some fun energy there this is the worst of all worlds where it's like not only do they not like each other but it's not even fun to watch because it's not like sparring it's not you know uh tete-a-tete it's just like silence and like unpleasantness yeah and this was the well i don't know should we wait should we talk about all of our piping hot news first before i start to talk absolute shit (laughs) but there there is no good good bravo news we decided right no we were just talking about that on my way over here i listened to Lindsay hubbard on alex alex baskin oh right yep Uh, alex baskin mike bravo podcast and i forgot that um she's bad for my mental health i i remember uh the the final reunions like the finale and the reunions of summer house last season were right before i went on a trip and i was like i've never needed a trip more or to like touch grass more because the amount that i think about how much she pisses me off was starting to really get to an inappropriate place (laughs) and i've enjoyed the break and listening to it again i was like oh yes yeah. I remember now she is my enemy. <laughs> right. But I was thinking, like, I, I felt the same things. Like, everything that she said sent that, like, that uh, that sense in my brain where I'm like, oh, my God, taken out of context, that sounds really bad. Why would you say this? <laughs> like, oh, no, like, this makes you so self-aggrandizing or, or egotistical. But then a part of me is, like, what is so compelling about Lindsay Hubbard is that the fact that she is a hero in her own mind and that everything she says she thinks is perfect and poetic and right and then that lets slip these things that make Lindsay a villain to some people (laughs) and she never lets it go so her self-awareness is low I guess or low enough to where she's the hero of her own story and I guess we all are in some way yeah Um, and Alex didn't really ever jab at her I think if you watch the video, you can kind of see him like snicker to himself a little bit. Like he's like, 
LOL at certain things, but he doesn't really like fight back on anything. Yeah, there was such there was some good stuff in there. I was like, oh man, Alex Baskin knows how to interview people. I was like, yeah. whoo, turtle time, take notes. But I <laughs> love that he just said like for the first ten minutes, just tell me what the hell, like how Summer House got started. Yeah, and and that was interesting. So interesting. Yeah, I was like, she which... tried to pull a Jax like take credit. You know, like she framed it all as like our group like me and kyle kind of thing but then when she actually explained it it was very clearly kyle yes yeah um, and she it, wasn't even cast on the first season because she was doing a different reality show about hotels in new york city and she was the pr character but then the show failed so then she got looped into the show but it almost completely moved forward without her yes so <laughs> yeah right that was that was interesting how summer house got formed and also they said that kyle she said that kyle was the one who said you can't build a house like this of just new yorkers who have never been to the hamptons who want to take a break and party with each other in the house these houses happen from organic friendships we all go together yeah. so kyle was sort of the impetus for why it started as an organic group yeah like they were trying to cast like real world style a yes. summer house and he walked into the audition and was like no 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 None of these hot young kids go to the Hamptons. It's like people that are in their like late 20s, early 30s who are have careers and are friends and you should cast a group, not um, cast it, which is like, I mean, that's why the show is so good. But um, that was funny. And then um, my, what else stands out is that she did um, say that she holds firm that she was essentially left at the altar yeah. by Carl. <laughs> Yeah, and even goes so far as to say, Alex Baskin goes, what do you think about these conspiracy theories of these <laughs> trolls online that think everything is, a, or all these conspiracy theories? And she goes, I've got a conspiracy theory of my own. What the hell was happening with Carl last season? Basically blaming Carl, or saying that Carl manufactured a storyline of le getting her up to the point where he could ever do this to her, like sort of faking his emotions towards her for two years, for two years, because it didn't make any sense to her how he could ever do that. Because she said that Carl never truly had a discussion with her about how bad things were <laughs> before he broke up with her. Yeah. She said she had no inkling um, that she's like, sure. I knew we had fights, but who doesn't? Yes. And I'm like, yeah, totally average and normal to be locking yourself um, into bedrooms, leaving the Hamptons in separate cars and um, like ripping each other to shreds your entire relationship up until two weeks before your wedding. That is very normal. Or looking down and finding that your significant other is recording you so they could possibly <laughs> blackmail you at some point because you're yelling at them for one second or whatever. I just like she also tried to like gotcha Carl and because Alex Baskin was like, I'm sure Carl is relieved that you've moved on so quickly and that you're pregnant and that your life is great now because now he doesn't have to feel as bad about how it went down because you're fine and she's like yeah i got gabby to make him admit that he's relieved and i was like is that bad right well yeah because <laughs> The honorable thing would be to be like, I am so glad that Lindsay, is, like, you know, yeah. the, the healthy thing. I don't understand what's wrong with that, except she's trying to say that proves that he should feel bad. Well, that he that he um, thinks that a lot of blame uh, from the audience that he would receive this season because of what he did to Lindsay is negated by the fact that she's happy and healthy and living her best life. But you and Isn't I. Isn't that true? Well, you and I were never on the side of Carl is to blame. And almost yeah. we thought, for the most part, we thought there was the, like even the Summer House people who, you know, were actually involved in this thought that this was the best thing that could have happened. And Carl ultimately made the right yeah. decision. But I think she thought that there would be backlash and Carl got to get out of the backlash of I what see. it would be like for him this season after um, disrespecting her I so think, much. Yeah, I think she just will never be okay with the fact that he was the one to break it off yes you know yeah because that puts him in the power seat totally yeah it was it was um the the whole summer house stuff was enlightening you know and then it, it did tee up or tease this season of summer house well where i was like i yeah. cannot wait to yeah she said stuff. um her she was like me and my executives are still figuring out um what role i'll play next season because her baby will be like eight months old at that point. She's like, obviously, I'm not going to bring a baby into the summer house, but I'll be in the city and probably in the Hamptons regardless. So it sounds like she wants maybe 
for them to like visit her on, during the city parts or you know i assume she'll participate in some fashion but not as usual yeah so we were wrong i said put the baby <laughs> in one of the rooms like in the corner of um not carl's room but um <laughs> Yeah, put the baby in Carl's room. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes so much sense, and I. But I still, it's to me, it's not all outlandish or too hard to find a solution to this problem. You yeah. know, it's very easy. They've yeah. done, they've made miracles happen before. <laughs> it's gonna be so easy to keep Lindsay as integral and still give us a little piece of that baby life. Yeah, she was saying that obviously her baby daddy is super private. Like we've never seen his face um he doesn't participate on the show and whatever and she was like i guess we'll see how that goes like she was sort of like laughing about it and i was like that actually is something you very much need to figure out especially now that you share a child and you're potentially going to have that child on camera like that is kind of like a major item yeah but i did like when she said it didn't matter to me that turner Coopy is not a public person or wanted to be really yeah. public because i'm not going to change my life the the reality of the situation is going to inform the reality show. I don't sure. make decisions based off that, you know. So I, I liked that part of it. It's yeah. it's probably how Brett and Madison were. Brett is like, "What the fuck? I'm never going to be on a, a show like this." And then eventually, you get, you know, you see how uh, important it is to show that side of your life for Madison. So you end up doing it. Yeah. I'm sure Turner could have a, a change of heart like yeah. that, especially if it's not in the summer house. Like if it's like they just go to the apartment or whatever. Although. From what I've seen so far, if he's been this MIA, I don't know if he would be on the show, but I don't know him, so I don't know. We don't know him at all. I but don't I'm, know him from Adam. I, mean, I don't know him from Adam either, but I'm excited to get a little, well, if he'll let me, get a glimpse of, <laughs> of Turner and what he's like. Get that brown heart off his face. Yeah, it's a huge question mark in my mind what kind of person he is. Yeah. Because I'm just speculating and, uh, yeah, I don't know. So Yeah, um, it's like, I don't know. I, I'm excited we have something to look forward to. I'll say that. For sure. And I want to apologize, but Archie is barking in the background, but there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. There's nothing to worry about there. <laughs> um, um, well, this is a little curveball, but um, the Hawk Tua crypto coin <laughs> uh, is completely crashing. And I wanted to say that Amy and I invested a lot of Turtle Time's money into that because we thought that the Hawk Tua wave was going to be cresting around this point. So uh, Every dollar you pay us on Patreon is now hawk to a coin <laughs> so unfortunately yeah we're gonna have to figure out how to convert our patreon dollars into hawk to a crypto um but it was the worst timing for this to happen because it's just it makes christmas complete shit Fuck. do you think that this is gonna crash the entire economy we're gonna have a further depression because of hawk to a girl i think so i mean it's gonna affect luigi mangione coin oh no it's gonna affect baby <laughs> no, four seasons coin. i need that <laughs> It's kind of going to sit, uh, no pun intended, a ripple through the crypto uh, uh, coin market. Yeah. Um, but I'm just, this is the last time I'm going to invest in a meme Bitcoin. Yeah. Did crypto you see coin. Luigi sort of did um, a, um, like, I'm a Patsy style um, move the other day? Mm, I didn't <laughs> hear that. I heard a lot of stuff like he was trying to emulate um, the Riddler from Batman. <laughs> That's why he put a lot of Monopoly money in his bag. And he had a YouTube. That was fun. He, yeah, very fun. He had a, a YouTube release that said, like, why so serious? <laughs> so I love that he's Good really countdown. Riddler inspired. This is our first, like, millennial. Is he a millennial or is he younger? He, what are, what are, um, what's the cutoff? What are 26 year olds? I guess he'd Gen be Z. Gen Z then. Upper Gen Z. So first Gen Z um, mastermind, think about the ways in which, you know, because like, you know, Jean Benet, it was like ransom letter, but now it would be like a TikTok. Oh, clue. my God. Yeah, <laughs> totally. He was so close to doing that, like a TikTok live and stuff. Um, he when he he went screaming like a little um, uh, he was throwing a tantrum as he was being sh thrown in jail. And he said, um, you're affecting my lived experience. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? I mean, of course. The cops you're were gonna like, go we're to... holding space. Yeah, we're holding space for you, but you still have to go to jail That's for added murder. added to the Miranda rights. Yes. So You have the right to be held space for. Right. And, and we if are going to read it, then you get a mistrial. Yeah. And we are going to hamper your lived experience. <gasps> That's terrible. Yeah. He's, um, he's <laughs> a really, I'm looking forward to more about what is going on with him. Um, but, you know, 
So that's it. I mean, in terms of news, did you have Do you anything? Do you think he else? could be on Summer House? I think. Well, the, I was gonna I was gonna save this, but um, they said that he's a huge Taylor Swift fan because they looked at his Goodreads, and um, so there, a lot of people are hoping that he'll get to um, have a visit with Taylor Swift at some point. <laughs> So well, if, she didn't do anything for Gypsy Rose, so right. I'd be surprised. Well, well, so we'll see Taylor Swift. If you want to let Luigi Mangione before he goes to jail have a little bit of time, did you read her book? Whose Taylor Swift? No, oh, she had a book. She released an era's uh, book because she will never relent from making people buy stuff. I know. I mean, I hate to say, I hate to say <laughs> something. I about... hate to say it. <laughs> I, I don't want to get don't get me started because I think Taylor Swift is a phenomenal artist I obviously did not like that Grammy stuff that she was doing we, we're still but harping on I just that. well I, you know when I get a glimpse and I see the true spirit of someone I can't ever let it down but or live it or get rid of it in my mind but I think I mean like the capital is I I you know I'm not a like <laughs> I just think it is it's so rampant it is so wild to be like, okay, a new iteration of eras is coming out. It's called uh, it's called more eras, and you got to go to Target and get the seven different variations of it. Yeah. I like when Billy Eilish said, like, um, you know, you're creating a bunch of like plastic in the dump or whatever. Yeah. And then she was like, oh, sorry, I wasn't really talking about Taylor Swift, but it's so obvious. It's like how many like how we should rebrand all of eighty of our um, Patreon episodes, but add like little Easter eggs and oh. be like. Uh, create a new tier so people have to listen again and find them and then when you listen to all of them it creates a sentence that's a clue oh. about luigi <laughs> oh my god of course yeah i could totally imagine it let me think about it more but definitely it'd be like it'd be like what's your favorite mar or yeah mario like who do you play in mario kart and then people would be like oh my god that was luigi and then mangione um i would love to prepackage existing garbage and have people pay for it again. Totally. I mean, even Beyonce is like, I historically am her biggest fan, but I'm like, girl, I don't need whiskey from you. Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't want that. I think there's a limit to uh, everyone's commercialism as an artist. And Taylor Swift is hitting that threshold of like, how truly how much will you spend on me? Yeah. Apparently, there's a lot of grammatical er errors in the Eras book as well. Really? It's poorly made. Really? Like yes. spelling errors? Yes. <gasps> like they I love all it out, like, self published. I love all my fonts. Yeah, only fonts. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Well, Taylor Swift, um, you are going to make so much money, you know, yeah. this year around Christmas time. That must feel amazing. Yeah, she at least does tip her uh, crew and stuff. Like, there's all those headlines. Like, she tipped her tour staff 150 million dollars or something like that and that's I'm like, amazing good yeah no yeah of course yeah i'm sure she's very um what's it called when you give money away charitable for yeah. sure how much money does she have a lot <gasps> oh my i couldn't even imagine like what would it be like <laughs> to even have a fraction of that amount of money as you may say just give us one thousand dollars that would be amazing okay well we don't have any news right yeah, if we think of something, we'll do breaking news in the middle, but there was really not much going on. Yes. But since we just watched Roni, we'll go straight into it because not to um, not make you excited to hear what we have to say, but it really was pure shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> slog means things to many people. It's been overly used, I'm sure, but this was a true slog. I felt like we were slogging through something i kept checking when this thing was going to be over it was about giving five swamp. it was giving swamp it was giving you're stuck in a swamp and your motion is quit you're in quicksand it was overall the worst case version of getting to the hotel and all of the shit that you have to go through to get settled yeah because it's like at least usually when it's Ramona and Sonia, it's so annoying when they do that, but it's funny how ridiculous they are and how pissed off everyone else gets at how selfish they're being. And it's funny. Like, it's like hijinks. Yes. This was, like, awful. Like, everyone was just like, I don't want to share because none of them like each other. Um, the tantrum that Uba threw, I was like, I was like, fine, just go to the hotel. Like, get out of here. Like, yeah. I don't care. Just leave. Yeah, it, it felt like what you really have to deal with when you check into a hotel. Like, I felt like you and I had to check in. And, yeah. and you know what I mean? Dunstan and, checks in. Totally. It felt like when Dunstan um, famously... Uh, Is he an orangutan? 
Yeah, let me remember the plot of just Dustin. Or was he a chimp? No, he was a huge, huge orangutan. Okay. Jason Alexander had a hotel, but unfortunately his son finds an orangutan somewhere in the city, and he brings him in, and he has to hide Dunstan in the hotel for a really long time. Does he wear a bell cap? Yeah, a he's hat at some point. He's so cute. Like let that. me, <laughs> let me. Um, I think it's he. I think he's able to pull off having Dunstan, um, safe for <laughs> half the movie. Oh, you know what kind of animal is this? <laughs> oh, that's is it. That is a chimp. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I thought it was a full um one of the like Planet of the Apes uh, orangutans, but it's it's just a chip. But anyway, that's a cute movie. Monkey Trouble, obviously. It was we were having uh, monkey fever in the nineties. But anyway. yeah, we've learned that that's not a great uh way to go. But right. um oh also when they did check in, they broke the fourth wall, which seems to be the way of this franchise right now and they have the staff as always waiting with the welcome drinks and the guy is like wiping his head and is like so over it and he's like i've never watched a show uh what is it he's like it's like women with money or something and the other woman's like yeah and he's like okay yes yeah he had no clue what the hell this was i'm sure that that's the conversation that everybody has right before the housewives get there they all are saying what the hell is this yeah it's just kind of interesting the way they're playing with the form but it's like in an odd way on this show yes i i agree completely um everything that they're doing in terms of fourth wall break is just not fun you could imagine it if it was in better hands it would be better um there was so much uh they like there's just so much annoying stuff about when they are entering the building and then uh, again bryn uh does once a round two of Anguilla stuff that was absolutely awful the first season where uh, Aaron took Uba's phone for 20 minutes. Yeah. You, you remember the aftermath of that. Bryn decides to play multiple pranks this episode and hides Jessel's luggage. I know. She's looking for it forever. And then when she finally gives it back to her, she's just like, okay, it's in here. Here we go. And there's no like laughter or like it was so not worth it and not entertaining for a second. No, and it, she put the um, suitcase right next to the bidet, <laughs> and so Jessel's like, "Well, thank you a lot. I'm gonna have to wash my suitcase because it might have um, um, shit. Sh- yeah, shit. <laughs> piss. <laughs> shit or piss next to it. Um, there is a moment the the big huge thing that happens, which you and I were kind of you and I winked at each other. We go, okay, Roni, there's a little bit of something here. Rebecca decides um to have a comeback. Yeah. Rebecca says, you know, I'm gonna do something here. Cause Bryn's been pushing her buttons. Yeah. Bryn's like, what can I get away with? Like, I'm gonna force Rebecca to share a room. I'm going to say I'll be in the shittiest room, but then I'm not going to take the shittiest room. I'm just going to run rampant over Rebecca until she pushes back on me. And Rebecca has the moment finally. And it was it was pretty delivered pretty well. Uh, Bryn goes, um, or Rebecca goes, I really wanted a break. I have four children. They're constantly jumping on my bed. It's like yeah. Dunstan checks in times four <laughs> in my room. And Bryn goes, we all have busy lives. Like, um, like yeah, we all want our own room. It's not about kids or whatever. And then Rebecca goes, "Well, I've got something here." She goes, "Well, spe- what it was? It <laughs> speak to me when thy has four children." Yeah, she says, "Uh, you'll know when you have them. You'll know when you have them. Delivered effortlessly. Delivered yeah. in the perfect tone. Where is it shade? Yeah. Is it? Did she mean it? Yeah. Great. It's yeah. the first win Rebecca has had. Yes." Um, cause right before that, um, she was treating, uh, Bryn was treating Becky like shit for, um, like she comes into the room after Bryn has jumped into bed with, um, Jenna and Raquel and she's like, Hey lesbians, your third one is here to which I say, you are not gay. Please stop. Right. Um, and then she, Becky comes in and she goes, look who it is. Boring Becky. And, uh, and then, you know, she gives her shit about, um, once Rebecca says, you'll know when you have them, she's like, I know what it's like to be busy. It's not about kids, whatever. And that turns into like the big drama moving forward to which it's like, <laughs> it seems quite clear. I mean, Becky was being shady as she should because yeah. all Bryn ever does is shade her constantly. Um, but I also, as a childless person, I know I'm not like 
dying to have kids and like actively trying which i'm like it would be one thing i don't know if this is like off the rails to say but no, it would be one thing if Bryn was like actively trying and like having a really hard time with like fertility and stuff then i'd be like that's kind of fucked up to like but i'm like she just like doesn't have a boyfriend right now right like she's trying to figure out what to do next i was just i felt and this could be offensive but i just felt it's literally true yeah like you you i'm sorry no matter all the knowledge you know in the universe you don't know at this point right now what it is like to have four children yeah does she have four uh she has a lot okay. yeah at least three um but, but and then Bryn is in a perfect universe Bryn is allowed to also push back i get it like this is exactly what would happen on a normal franchise sure. you know what i mean yeah um but yeah she holds firm later in the episode she's telling she's trying to spread this as if it's real tea like you won't believe what she said to me oh my god like uh, she told me that I don't know what it's like to have kids and you can see like Cy and Raquel and like everyone being like I mean you don't <laughs> yeah it's kind of the only thing they have this episode that's real because the Aaron and Uba stuff is absolutely awful we won't even spend one second um, no it sucked Bryn does a full um uh like what I don't I don't know what it's called but she wants to keep playing on the baby Becky thing or, or what's her yeah. name she <laughs> goes from she goes from boring Becca no, boring Becky to bitchy Becky yeah. to baby Becky need a bottle. <laughs> All in the same, like, three different confessionals. I was like, I don't know if the B Becky thing is, is working for me. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, she just doubles down throughout and is like, don't tell me I don't know. I know everything. And I was like, it's giving... I know it all. Yeah. It was like, it was, she was like, I have the brain of God. She was like, I know everything in the universe. I know what, like, I know your lived experience. I know everything. I know what it's like to be Luigi Mangione. I know, I know what it's like to be Da Vinci. I know what it's like to be Da Vinci. I, it's, she, I, I it was kind of astonishing. It was like, right. I I'm know. Like, did you just say that? What? Like, I'm like, did you yeah, just say that? You know everything? Yeah. In the world. Yeah. And, she has like the uh, master consciousness. Like, everything in the world what is that like that's like the well the i forget what the limitless pill does but oh, i want to watch that me too um and then uh she goes i oh, this is later you know but yeah. i'll just say it now bryn says i know what it's like to have people bothering me in the middle of the night <laughs> i have puppies that are licking me at night and i have russian billionaires calling every hour like, to what talk the to fuck me does that mean it's like kids but like, why are they calling you? What yeah. do they want? And I'm being a little stinker too, because I'm like, I've been doing like, ch I've been dad for three <laughs> and a half months, and I'm like, oh man, people say it. People say, oh, you Whoa. don't have to convince me. I know. Yeah, I you know the difference between my life and yours right now. <laughs> right. Like it's like, <laughs> yeah, but I get, I get, I also get the little bit of the offense or, or, or whatever. I was just glad that Rebecca did say one thing yeah. that caused a little bit of uproar because like you mentioned to me, Bryn has been getting away scot-free on yeah. this show for a very long time. No one has checked Bryn once. And you said Bryn is very easy. It would be easy for someone to check Bryn in a yeah. different, on a different franchise. I know. Franchise. It's kind of the great tragedy of the show. Um, I know I saw a tweet a long time ago that stuck with me that it was like she wouldn't last 10 minutes in a room with dorinda like yeah. imagine the shreds that she would be in like it she just gets to do whatever she wants because everyone's like whatever girl you know yeah. like everyone's kind of like Ugh. yeah was it was it that you sent me a a, a tweet or something where no, no instagram where it was like aaron knew, uh, like used to party with luigi mangione and then dorinda <laughs> said don't care was that about aaron Leachy? it was um that aaron went to high school with scott disick oh, oh and okay. that was the headline and dorinda commented who cares yeah who cares <laughs> yeah i was like yes yeah you're right but it, does that come a little too close to you wouldn't last a minute in the <laughs> asylum in which i was raised uh oh yeah D Kristen said that about the new sir servers right which i'm like that's cringe to say but it is like you can never create the battlefield of original form reality tv totally. it's just like not the same um also uh so becky does say to the group she's like they're like i think uh i think jessel says she 
Brynn's a little sensitive about that topic right now because she's kind of like figuring out what she's going to do. And uh, Becky's like, that's why I said it. And I was yeah. like, okay, good. Yeah. I'm glad the dark Minkoff rises. She claimed ownership of it. I meant it to her, she yeah. says. And also she says, a storm is brewing within me. She doesn't say this, but <laughs> metaphorically she says- I a was sto- born in the shadows. I was, she says, basically she's like Bane <laughs> waiting to come out of that big- pit that he was living in she goes i'm gonna do more things just like that to bryn good i'm just like who fucking cares i don't care if it's offensive all oh, of course bryn does is offend yeah like um, she's like your brand is shitty you're fucking lame uh everyone hates you scientology sucks <laughs> yeah the sea org contract is a little <laughs> lopsided and gives uh, the sea organization a little too many uh rights over your uh future um wait, wait any- also speaking of da vinci um uba gave a shout out she goes i love i mean for the most part i'm like what the fuck are you talking about but in this one case she um compared running around to choose your room to the da vinci code which i guess um i would have usually gone with like a mission impossible if we're talking like running totally but i'm like that's like kind of like a good deep cut running movie um would be da vinci code they are running around yeah robert lang trying to find stuff yeah he sees like when he goes and he sees that the eye on the dollar pyramid or whatever (laughs) has a eye on it he's like oh my god there's an eye in the natural history museum on mona lisa so i'm gonna go behind that painting and he runs his ass off to get there there's an eye (laughs) there's an eye on the you know the pyramid dollar you know the yes 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 yeah um so I get. I was like, oh, I am with you totally. But you're right. Someone else. You could have said like, um, what are other famous running movies? Mission Impossible. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. He <laughs> runs his ass off. Um, um, there was a funny moment too. Uh, there was a lot of like weird moments because it's like this is more like it's interesting to watch Roni as like what's going wrong. Yeah. And uh, there's one point where Aaron like Bryn just purposefully lies again at the table and says while well, Aaron is out of the room she goes hey just so you know everybody's talking shit about you but she's lying just to stir up shit and it's like exactly what happened with Bryn she already did this where she's just purposefully f- lying to create conflict and it's so bad um, but then Aaron gets upset and she thinks it's real and she goes am I in a Looney Tunes cartoon right now <laughs> do you remember that moment yeah she cried on the last trip they were on as well so it's all um circling around the fact that uba called her a gaslighter and then Sai, she's like who else at this table thinks i'm a gaslighter and Sai raises her hand and she's like i think you have done it to every single one of us you do weird shit and i guess that is about the prank which i'm like i don't need to talk about that anymore i'm not even sure if uba knows what a gaslighter is i am sick of that term generally do you think it's you (laughs) turtle time can say it right it's time to no one can say it anymore. It's just tired and it's confusing. What terms don't we say anymore that are like we used to think were fun? I was thinking like lit. Uh-huh. We don't say AF. We don't say AF. I think gaslight, unfortunately, let's say good night. Turn off the gas yeah. on it for a little bit until yeah. we can all collectively learn what it means. It stemmed from the last Trump election. So like now that we're already back. Were we being to gaslit the- then? Yes. <laughs> we were gaslit. I feel like that's what, what the era it came from. Right? All right. Yeah. Well, well, you know, if you've ever, if you're a victim of gaslighting, I, you know, maybe you still want that term out there, but I think it's been, it's become, it's lost all meaning, unfortunately. Yes. And Aaron's just like, I don't do the definition of what that is. And then, um, <laughs> uh, Uba goes, you're gaslighting me. <laughs> yeah. And also I loved Uba, um, her little colloquialisms. She goes, I wish everyone's nose would show up like Pinocchio when they were lying. Yeah. We, we kept, you and I kept winking at each other. There's a lot of cartoon stuff in this. Yes. Am I a Looney Tune? I'm <laughs> Hey Hey the Chicken from Moana. And right. then what was that last one you said? Pinocchio. I wish, I wish so badly that people's nose would show up exactly like Pinocchio's <laughs> nose when they lie. Um, one also, one interesting thing uh, is that Jenna admits reluctantly, uh, begrudgingly, oh, right. that that $200,000 Bentley was just a loner. Yeah. You and I could get that for the day. Yeah. yeah. I know. It was weird. I assumed that she at least leased it. Like, yeah. I assumed it was a lease, not a purchase. They put the purchase price. But I'm like, no one buys those. Like, I'm, Lisa Vanderpump 
we as we know she gets like a new car every summer but didn't you feel gaslit when <laughs> she when she pulls immediately up, broke the rule <laughs> I, as an audience member, felt gaslit perfectly in terms of that definition by her going to the climbing gym saying, hop in, honey. Um, I, beep, beep. We're taking this thing home. But Jenna is the kind of person that you imagine to be forthright and be like, I got the loner. Right. So so she needed to be called out to well, tell us. I don't us. even understand what she means. She's like, they loaned it to me and I didn't even have to do like spawn con or anything. And I'm like, so they literally just did it for the episode. Like. Um, because I think when that episode aired, I was like, remember on Secrets Revealed how Sandoval showed up to that yeah. um, open house in a Rolls Royce or a Bentley or whatever? And it was just so stupid because I'm like, who do you think believes that you drive that car? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I'm so naive that if you wear something rich <laughs> or drive something rich, I go, you own that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jewelry. I mean, a quarter million dollars, those cars. But I thought, well, so Jenna... Jenna Lyons, unless they edited out her Jenna telling the truth. Lyon. Yeah, she's lying. That's what Trump would call her. Lion Jenna. Oh, he would. That <laughs> writes itself. He would be like, uh, that was the easiest nickname I've ever come up with in my life. What's her last name? Lyons? Leakin Jenny Lyon. Oh, my God. He would have a field day. She better not ever piss him off. He might be watching. He, you think? <laughs> Maybe, honestly, <laughs> very possible. Um. Uh, well, okay. So, but what I was just, I just want to end this or not, not end it, but Jenna saying, I, I just think that I was, um, she was, pr I feel like there's only one way to take it is that she was purposefully trying to counter counteract the broke, right. Broke thing. And then they all, once they hear that fact, they go, Oh my God, Jenna Lyons might actually be <laughs> broke. Yeah. She needed to do that garage sale for real. Yeah. Which Tr again, tell us how much you made. I know. Um, but yeah, she said she sold literally almost everything. She only had 12 items left. Um, they were like, LOL, it was so funny when you said that you were doing it to pay for your teeth. And she was like, no, I literally am like, I mean, for the, she has to get like full on implants and she's gotten so many different surgeries. And if they're not covered by dental insurance, it's probably like hundreds. It could be like a hundred thousand dollars. Did she have really mushy teeth? They were, she has that like, um, Oh, that disorder where her like i think it's like it affects her lashes like her hair her teeth um it's something about the i forget exactly but it yeah she basically has like weak teeth that like needed to be replaced i forgot about that so yeah. i can't even imagine how expensive it is to like fully correct that yeah so okay dental shit is no joke yeah um i'm like fuck it's open enrollment i'm like do i get dental insurance this year or no i say no thank you every year i say i'm so sorry i can't afford it this we year. gotta protect these pearly whites i know i try to brush them floss yeah <laughs> your dentist is listening he, oh my gosh please don't listen dr uh teeth <laughs> Isn't that the guy from the Muppets, Dr. T? I don't know. I don't know. I've only my only Muppets um interaction is Muppets Christmas Carol, which I just <gasps> watched two days ago. Oh, I want to watch it so bad. It's really it's it, playing well, at the New Bev every year. I saw that. I was so proud of Dr. Them. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> is that a is that a play on <gasps> That's so cute. Oh, it's, it's I think just Janice a, is in that band too. Oh, okay. It's just a fun play on like a cool prog rock band yeah. name. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dr. Teeth is so cute. I've never seen it. I, I only him. know, I only know Muppets from Christmas Carol. So he's not, he's not in it. You should hit all the, the original Mupp movies. Okay. I will. Um, I'll just say Penny was absolutely loving it. Oh. She started rocking back and forth when her favorite Muppets are Bunsen and Beaker. I was like, are you sure you don't like the Charles Dickens guy with that weird gonzo? Yeah. And she was like, no, she didn't speak. What about the little Mises and Mousies she, she, when they were ice skating? I saw she had a little upturned mouth, like sort of a Mona Lisa smile when she saw those mice. But when Bunsen and Beaker oh, started wow. bleeping and blooping, she goes, oh, my God, you just showed this me the best thing. for me. Yeah. I love the little tiny Tim Kermit boy. So cute. And I love... I, well, first of all, Michael Caine, it goes without saying, you are, uh, you are an amazing actor in this. I love how serious, but I love that they didn't make Miss Piggy and like a bunch of, and, Ga and Fonzie, the Christmas Carol ghost, they actually went all out and made these amazing looking puppets yeah. to keep, to, uh, 
uh, keep that realistic, surreal vibe. Yeah. Like the the fight. Well, oh, what the hell are we doing? <laughs> the ghost of Cre- all the ghosts of. If anybody hasn't seen it, I'm sure I'm I'm not I'm speaking to There's everyone who's big, already seen it. Burly guy. It. Yes, he's so cool. Yeah. And he starts to age. The and little then, angel girl. Yep. The gravestone. And then or the final one is scary as hell. The scariest Muppet I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh, man, I'm ready to watch. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, what else? There's like um. I don't know. It, it, there's just the dinner at the end, and um, this is where sh- uh, Bryn and Becky are going back and forth, and it seems like it's going to bleed into the next episode. But um, Becky stands up to her. She's like, you've been saying shitty things to me ever since we met. And Bryn is like, you don't need to teach me. I'm the teacher, and you're the student. And Becky says, you thrive on being a bully, and it needs to end. Yeah, and it was like, oh, my God, will Becca make this end? Um, but Bryn thinks she's got the, you know, the ace up her sleeve by being like, your kid, no kid shaming me when right. it's something I want so bad. But Becca is not, didn't apologize. She decides to go forth. So yeah, that provided a little bit of some fun, but not a great start to <laughs> this trip at all. Yeah. I do like that um, everyone shaded both Uba and um, <clears throat> Bryn for acting so uh, luxury minded, like, Uba threatens to go stay at a hotel until Sai's like, I'll take the shitty little room. And she keeps, Uba keeps bragging about how much money she has and that she'll stay at the St. Regis and all this. And I think it's uh, Raquel that's like, I've seen your tiny apartment. Like, yeah. give me a fucking break. And then later when Bryn is like, I've got Russian billionaires calling me all night long. They're like, you live in a one bedroom. Like, what are you talking about? Right. It's like, how many Russian oligarchs do you, <laughs> are you truly courting? Anora. You haven't seen it yet, huh? Oh, no. But is, it, is there an <laughs> oligarch in it? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Don't get me started. Putin allows oligarchs. Um, starting to feel a little bit like that around here. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Amy, please. <laughs> please. It's Christmas. Let's not talk politics. So Bernie Sanders' uh, keyword of the century, oligarchy. Is that what he said? He loves talking about oligarchy. Oh, my God. I never. I don't say it enough. I don't think about him enough. I'm so far from being one that it's not. Well, yeah, it's not on my mind. <laughs> yet. Oh God! So you're, th- so we might have to think about them soon. <laughs> I was also not to the mention first podcast oligarchy. What's that? What? Wait, wait, wait sorry. What did you say? <laughs> I was thinking podcast driven oligarchy. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> um, the last thing I'll say is that Uba and Jessel were screaming at production, going like, "Stop filming me! Like, um, stop it!" And I was yeah. like, "I think you, you <laughs> both should be nice to crew." Yeah, because like. They could fire you both, and it wouldn't hurt them at all. Yeah. So, like, not only are you boring and bad to watch on camera, but then we see uh, film and footage of you scre- or yelling at production. It's like, so you're not great to work with either? Right. That's horrible. Yeah. I would think that you guys would be, like, loving the crew every minute because sure. you guys are, are, are lucky to be on yeah, this Uber franchise. Yeah, was like, I either need a ride to a hotel or um, to the airport yeah. because I'm not doing this. And I'm like... You are on a show where you're being paid to be trapped in a house with other bitches. You're not allowed to leave. Yeah. It, Which I think, if I remember correctly, someone does leave by the end of this trip. Really? Yes. Wow. Well, we, you and I will stay tuned and report every every minute of it. You want to? How do you feel about switching on over to um, Potomac? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, great. Um, okay, so Potomac was, I thought fun yes but same as always pretty much yeah and what is that quality called enjoyable yeah i've been trying to say it's like a dependable solid dependable seven out of ten yeah everything it's never gotten to a nine out of ten i would say but it's never bad yeah it's just yeah fun enjoyable and some stuff i wanted to remark on that i thought we get a post horrible tj meltdown yes. at wendy's 40th birthday tj is now riding high on the horse he is he I, at first i was like oh my god you guys aren't going to talk about the fact that tj had a major meltdown and was basically screaming and throwing a tantrum and it I, at first i was like oh no you are going to ignore this because tj immediately starts doing this um kind of 
bad comedy bit goof where he goes mo- goof mode total goofball and i kept thinking of you when that meme of like when that one one uh, lady has a or person has a chip, chips on her head. chips on her head and they go K- have you seen my friend they're one of the craziest people i've ever seen in my life this whole scene <laughs> yeah. was like that tj did italian a, a, a kind of a i'll say it, stereo like a offensive like a full luigi Kind of like a, it was like, I don't even know, but the timing of this was like, I was like, oh my God, please don't talk like this. He put on a big silk bonnet reminiscent of Luigi's green hat. I was like, what the hell are you doing? And he goes, I want to make you Boblioni pizza. Or you know that, that, what's that brand called? (laughs) And, And he's making up for the fact that he was rude to her, but he's not specifically saying it. Yeah. And then he goes, instead of wine, I'm going to pour you something special that I got. He squeezes out this thing, which makes this horrible squeezing noise. Yeah. And it's this brilliantly um, <laughs> piss yellow <laughs> energy drink or something. What was it's, it? It's called, so um, it looks unnaturally colored. Yeah. Oh, can I say that? Yeah. It looks, it looks like artificial. Gatorade. Yeah. Well, I mean, it looked even worse. And it's it's called Big hug fruit barrels. What the fuck is that? So he went and got a bit, bunch of big hug fruit barrels, which I looked at the ingredients and it's like pure just corn syrup yeah. and artificial dyes. Like there's no fruit content in Does it. Does he not drink either? I, I mean, it must, it must, he must not. I think he wanted to say like, these are my favorite things. No sex and no wine. Uh, check, please. <laughs> <laughs> wow it's true some people would definitely Get be out of here some people would definitely be saying that and then when she drinks this big hug fruit barrel she goes "Ooh, it's really sweet and also there's a moment where she goes um you, if you're an italian you know we say prego and he goes this is my restaurant <laughs> and he, you you see that same that same mean energy that he has yeah and he makes her like eat shit about uh She's like, I thought you were going to enjoy your time with the guys. And like they show the clip and he literally goes, what does he say? He's like, I'm warning you. Yes. Uh, he's uh, he's so bad. He's like, um, he, he, well, he's yeah, he, he basically says, I felt like an Uber date and you just dropped me off there. And then you had four hours without me. And she keeps saying the same thing, which like, I don't think that's fair. I just thought you were OK. Yeah. To talk to ray or yeah. whatever she's like i'm sorry it won't happen again which i'm like if i ever had to say that sentence out loud i would like kill myself i oh, hate the sound of that it won't happen again it, like what am i like at work yeah and <laughs> and also stacy had to fulfill obligations of filming there were yeah. so many moments where people are like you got to be a part of this scene you got to be a part of this scene she was obviously overwhelmed yeah this being her first like party environment yeah she needs to get out of there and then um she's like well just so you know i thought it was interesting that she posed this question to him she's like you know all the other girls think that i should be out sowing my wild oats after my divorce and not with them in the sexless relationship and she's like what would you say like would you still continue on our journey if i saw other people and he's like I would still be friends with you, but I wouldn't exclude myself from having options as well. And it's like, well, what does that mean if you don't fuck women? Right. It's like, what <laughs> like, do you want? You'll just like hang out with other girls? Yeah, like a new partner at the zoo. <laughs> but then Stacy, I thought Stacy was actually being like, I want to make love to someone. I want to have sex before marriage. Yeah. I'm actually thinking about the option of seeing other people. But it turns out that it was only to like, call j or tj's bluff yeah and be like i want you to just say how much you really want me so it was more like i'm so all in i just want to hear from you that you love me yeah i also want to ask you tj says he says um you know i've never been married before and i was like oh so has he never had sex before right it's weird i I, don't know i think he i mean it's interesting to me if he's a virgin right i get the vibe that he's not like i feel like they've alluded to like past relationships but now he's doing a thing i don't know if he's like born again or something where he's like at this juncture moving forward i will not be having premarital sex or what if he had sex once and he didn't like it (laughs) he's like yucky (laughs) he goes uh that completely sucked (laughs) hated it (laughs) (laughs) has anyone ever had sex one time and they said oh that really sucked yeah they're just like "Mm, not for me (laughs) yeah sex is so (laughs) interesting (laughs) 
<laughs> Wait, also, we don't have to get into it, but the show opens with Giselle saying there's like a plot to leave her kids out of her dad's will. Totally. It w- reminded me of, um, just because the Menendez boys are on my radar, it reminds me of when they were trying to get access to the computers and, and yeah, sleeping with like the safe. Yeah, they shredded the, the will or whatever. Because they wanted their dad's money so bad. <laughs> But I was like, what? I was like, who are these people that were around his deathbed that threw the will and the trash can and like drafted a new one that left out Giselle and her daughters that they had him sign against his consciousness? Yeah, I'm so like with wills. I don't know. Like I have only like I don't have it. I don't have one yet. Yeah. But um, I'm like, I, really? Do you? You have a baby now. Oh, should. my God. <laughs> can I wait till January 3rd? Yeah. Um, you have one? Uh. I actually don't. Um, but my mom is like obsessed because uh, when both sets of my grandparents had passed and my uncle too, not to be dark, but it's like if shit's not organized, mm. it's a massive pain in the ass because you have to go to like probate court and like get things that weren't put in a will. You have to like prove over the course of like mm. a long period of time that it should go to you or your family or whatever. And so my mom is like, obsessed with getting every all the ducks in a row so i've there's like a trust and there's like a because you just have to put things in a certain way so that they're irrefutable got it i'm gonna do a living will right now in turtle time (laughs) uh i been bequeath uh, upon my untimely death i bequeath all of my possessions including all of my money to my daughter penny and my wife megan can you tell one item in the room that i could have yes uh, and to Amy, uh, I bestow upon her whatever she wants the most of my book collection, my record collection, and any tchotchke that she loves the most, plus um, $1,000. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> All right. You and heard it here, Little course. Turtle Cuties. You got my living will straight from my mouth. Do not alter it. I don't want to see any videos going around that says, uh, I bequeath $1,000 to Patreon <laughs> to our Villa Rosa VIPs. No. Um, yes. So, um, oh, but, but, but wait, I, oh, I just wanted to say that like with Will stuff, yeah. I could imagine either way, like, like who do you believe? Right. Like, do I believe that it's like, it's it, two parties are just fighting over money. Right. Do you believe like, oh no, he said he, he said his wife or whoever they think is taking advantage of him. He goes, I, well, sorry, I didn't mean to do his voice, but I, <laughs> You know, I'm I'm dying. I want you to have everything. Like, I could totally believe that that was the world because I know that some little stinkers on the other end are like, let's burn the will. I saw the Menendez brothers. Totally. They were trying to do that. Yeah, it's like it could come down to just who wants to fight for it the most. Like, I had a neighbor who passed away and they had kind of like on a post-it or like a piece of paper strewn on the, like so unorganized that he was going to give another neighbor his car. And the neighbor just was like, I don't know like how to move forward with this. Like I don't like he kind of was just like I it just ended up falling into the hands of whatever uh friends or family that wanted to wow. get into his shit the most because the other neighbor was like I don't even know how to move forward with this. Like wow. I don't like n- know what to do with this information. Oh, you know I would what have I mean? been a stinker and took taken oh, it. Oh, totally. I would have been like eh, eh, yeah, eh, beep beep um <laughs> burn that post it note. Um no, totally. Um well, you know, right after this, I will, uh, I will <laughs> file my official will because I think you're right. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, she was saying that also she was since her ex husband is getting remarried that there shan't be any shenanigans with his new wife and that he's going to put money in a trust for the girls because it's so ironclad that the new wife can't come for the trust. There was a bunch of weird stuff with Shakespeare's will. Okay. I read in this Bill Bryson book, like his signature is like really <gasps> weird. It doesn't match any of his others. So they think that he was like completely incapacitated when he died. How old was he? Uh, you know, he only lived to be like 66 okay. or something, you know, but it, like they're, they were like, we don't know what the hell is going on with Shakespeare's will. It's really totally. weird. Um, yeah. Um, but then it's like there's like Anna Nicole Smith, like she was supposed to get shit, and then what's his name's son was like ah ah ah. Anna Nicole Smith, who was? Um, she was married to that ancient ass oh. man. Oh, and some say that a huge reason why she did do that was for <laughs> financial benefit to herself. I mean, yeah. Some people <laughs> say that, right? The the sad 
losers out there that yeah. think she had ill intentions. Uh, oh, okay. So that's under that. I want to put a little spotlight, not too important, you know, not the biggest thing in the world, but I did like Ashley and Giselle's speed dating yeah. uh, sequence. Which for some reason was at a gay bar. Oh, it was. And it seemed like they were the only women participating. Yeah, it was, it was fully set up for them. And I was thinking like, that's a pretty coveted speed dating session for yeah. those uh, guys coming yeah. in. It's like you get to potentially date Ashley Darby or Giselle like yeah. like that's kind of fun and I like you know I've seen a hundred scenes of speed dating I feel like it's yeah. happened on like Very five common. different franchises but what I liked about this one is that it actually did yield something yeah Josh um Ashley Darby likes this guy Josh did you see she posted about him on Instagram like this week no she was like did you like meeting him on the show but the photo I think might have been from that day so he it had wasn't um, like um he had Recent. a beer pong um he had a beer ping pong ball in <laughs> um, his hand axe throwing yeah oh and then Giselle meets someone named Nams and i was like oh my god these guys are duds they're not going to like anyone one guy goes i found out it was your birthday yesterday and i got you your favorite flowers tiger lilies but don't worry i didn't do any creepy research on you <laughs> and it was instantly like she started hitting the button going er, 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 get yeah. this guy away but then i liked that Giselle and Nams instantly had chemistry. And it's so interesting to watch real time chemistry totally. when it works. I was yeah. like, Giselle is like, she likes this guy. Totally. When uh, she was like, I'm born and raised um, from this area. And he goes, So you know what time it is? And she was like, Hell yeah. She goes, I love this guy. <laughs> and then, like, there was a horrible conversation right before where the one guy goes, I'm sorry I didn't get you flowers. And, and she goes, oh, don't worry about it. And he goes, ah, that would have been so much better. And, like, he just instantly started on the wrong foot, yeah, whereas Nams energy. was killing it. Then yeah. I'll just I'll segue in because it's part of the same, uh, you know, sequence. But Ashley decides to go on a date with Josh to a game-centric bar. Yeah. Right? In yeah. denim cutoffs. Oh, right. <laughs> they get Coronas. Yes. They have. And, and again, the chemistry is good. Where I'm like, whoa, this isn't that awkward. Josh is like um, confident, fun. And then they organically get to the story of him having a very tragic event in his life. I couldn't believe it. Last year, he got diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. He's in remission. But Ashley was immediately like just like bonded. She's like, oh, my God. Like, I could not imagine being, what, 29 years old. It's a dropper old. like Jesse Solomon. Oh. It's like a great asset to have. Oh, like you it. think so? I didn't even because think Because you're it. immediately like, aw. Oh, yeah. You know, she, it's like Ferris Bueller, remember? When all the girls are like, he's sick. <gasps> like, he's so hot and sad and sick. <laughs> oh, right. Um, oh, my God. They all knew he was sick? Oh, right. Because it was like, oh, get well, Ferris. Yeah. They're like, I heard he's donating his eyes to Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <gasps> oh, they thought he was going to die. Yeah, it turned into a whole thing. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, I, I got to. Re- I, yeah, I, I didn't remember that. Then the date, it's like they're having fun. They talk about that. They talk about her boys. And then Ashley goes. She goes, let's play a new game. How about if I win, you go give me a big smoocheroo? I think she said winner gets a smooch, which means either way. Yeah. And then she like throws the ping pong ball and it hits the dartboard or whatever. And she goes, that means kiss. And her and Josh kissed on the first date and I loved it. Yeah. It was fun. It was good. Um, And then on a darker tone. Oh, the opposite <laughs> of that. So to precurse this, Mia earlier talks to Kay because she her boyfriend or fiance or boyfriend whatever owns that mental health facility Mm -hmm. so she has a little bit of a background in that area and she tries to tell her she's like what you're doing with gordon is not good um like you need to learn some tools about dealing with mania yeah and you need to you know tell him what the hell is going on with gordon gordon keeps coming over to watch saturday night live every saturday (laughs) yeah he's like it's 11 30 he goes who's the guest this week is it chapel rowan and and (laughs) paul mescal hell mescal he goes i gotta see that um yeah you're right so that provides context for what we're about to see and mia tells her because she's like this shit about uh ink being the baby daddy you gotta quit saying that and she's like, well, we are going to get a paternity test. Like, that is still a conversation. And, huge thing, Mia says, I don't think Ink is the father of Jeremiah, right? right? But then, like, one second later, she goes, they really are alike. Yeah, I, oh, I wanted to ask you this, and this could be the most offensive thing I've ever said on Turtle Time. Yeah. You tell me. <laughs> Beep. And another thing. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, um, wouldn't you? Oh, okay. Tell me if I'm wrong. You just swat it down, and we will beep it. But wouldn't you, at, by eight years old, wouldn't you sort of see 
mannerisms, stuff that would identify to who the father is. Like in Mamma right. Mia, <laughs> I know pa- Pierce Brosnan. Well, no, you don't know because they're actors portraying. But it's like, <laughs> don't you see the same like distinctive characteristics sure. about someone? Right. By eight years old, wouldn't Gordon start to blossom if he was the father within the son? Right. Yeah, especially because there's two of them. So it's like, is one drastically different than the other? Do, is that is that off base to say? No, but I also don't know very many kids. So I don't really know how that works. I would just be like, oh, I don't know either. I only know like six kids. <laughs> but I would just be like, oh, he reminds me of Gordon. Like that's, some, yeah. that's I don't know. Who Looks knows? like how Ronan Farrow is like absolutely giving Frank Sinatra. You think that. It's a fun conspiracy. I mean, he doesn't look like goddamn Woody Allen, I'll tell you that. Hmm. I, I think I've already said this before, but Ronan Farrow is... Well, oh, I can't say it. It's so offensive. Um, we're going to have to bleep it out. But I think he's Woody Allen's. But I guess you're right. When you see old blue eyes, um, Frankie, next to Ronan, you do see that same... He hmm. looks like him a lot. Hmm. <laughs> Do you think that the the Frank Sinatra and Mia Farrow's kid could be an investigative journalist? Sorry, which combo did you just say? <laughs> it's all right. Well, let's get to the bottom of that one next week, okay? Yeah. For the Christmas episode. Um, yeah. So then Mia is um, with the kids. They're like, why do you and daddy live in two different places? And she's like, remember I told you we're getting divorced? And the son was like, no, you didn't. Yes. <laughs> Now, this, I think this sent shockwaves through Mia because she had told us and the audience and everyone, we think that she's post speaking to her children about the divorce, or at least I did. And then you find out straight from Jeremiah's mouth that he has no clue what's going on. So then she realizes in this scene that she has to actually have the conversation with them about the divorce. I thought that was kind of interesting. She's kind of taken aback the whole time, this scene. It's awkward and weird. Gordon joins. Um, He's like, you know, he basically says, he's like, we know that this is the best thing to do or whatever. And she's like, so you agree that we should get divorced? And he's like, I'm resigned to the fact that we're getting divorced. Like, I'm just getting used to that idea. He says, I've resigned myself to life after Mia. And then Mia goes, that sounds like a novel. (laughs) Could you think Gordon, Gordon could right now start writing a memoir called Life After Mia? Do it. We'll read it. Me too. I definitely will. And then I like when um, uh, the daughter asks, she goes, where did you and mommy meet? And uh, Gordon goes, South Beach. And she goes, but where, which South Beach? And he goes, Charlotte South Beach. And she goes, but where specifically within Charlotte South Beach? And he goes, at a club. And then they pan or they show the, the clip that it was a strip club. Yes. Yes. Um, and she goes, the daughter's like, you can't marry Mr. Ink. You get what you get and you don't get upset. Yes, so Mia has to hear right now on camera that her daughter told her that you can't marry Mr. Ink. It really calls a lot of things into question, that she hasn't told her children properly what is going on between her and and Gordon, and also that they don't really like Ink at all over Gordon, you know, like they haven't bonded enough with Ink to where they want their mom to be happy with Ink. I was kind of like, whoa, that must be... sort of devastating for Mia to hear, especially in the moment. Right. And it's also like, no need to move this freaking fast. Like what is happening? Um, and then, uh, the Gordon is like, we should probably have another conversation with them outside of this one. Cause this one was disjointed and weird. Um, and she's like, I want to preserve their innocence. And he's like, I don't want them to learn to repeat these patterns. And she's like, well, I want them to learn that it's okay Mm -hmm. to leave when things are bad. And then she tells him, she's like, both Kay and Ink told me that I need to set better boundaries with you or whatever. And I'm like, don't tell him about what Ink says you should do. Like, that's a bad call. Totally. And then she, uh, she ends the episode. She goes, I don't have anything more to give Gordon. I want to stop taking care of him. Basically saying, like, I'm 
in the ink world now, no more connection with Gordon. What we're right. already allowing is too much. Um, I, w- I watched last season of Potomac, and one of the most shocking things was that Gordon actually gave Mia, um, he let Mia, ha- he said that she could see other people. He just had two conditions for her. He said, be discreet and don't get the kids involved. And he said that Mia broke both of those rules with ink. She brought the kids over to ink's home. Um, and so like they had to see who he was yeah. and then she wasn't discreet about it at all. Like posting about him on social media or whatever, like the word got out instantly. And he's like, you broke both of my rules. Sucks. Yeah, yeah. It's a, like sad situation I, i'm like gordon is pretty endearing to me i didn't have a good impression of him but i guess in this context i'm like and i'm removed from whatever the hell else horrible shit he did yeah but for now i'm just like man he's just like bummed out his like his life plan of like just being married to mia just like fully got up you know upended for him he's like i'm i potentially am gonna have no one for the rest of my life yeah it is just sad um and then next week karen has a love lagoon party with mermaids and I love in the promo for the next episode, they show this dog, like a little old dog trot up to the fence and they play it like it's like a horror. Like it's like there's like lightning or something and everyone's like, oh, yeah. do you have a dog? And then they go and they go, oh, my God. And then, and then it's just I think it's Jacqueline. Yeah. She wasn't invited to the party. Yeah. And she brought her dog, I guess. Um, yeah. But I loved the little <laughs> the cut of like as if it's like a chupacabra or something. And it's like this yeah. little old dog like walking over. It was a really cute dog. Yeah. And then they also cut to Ray and he's going, Karen, don't get me started on Karen and I's love life. She used to completely tear me up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They uh, had a little scene on this episode where they're just saying that they're she didn't know if their marriage was going to make it that. They were potentially having like a huge fight the night of her accident, um, but they're doing better post accident and like he's helping her with court. He's driving her around. And so, you know, yeah. Do you think well wishes me too? Absolutely. Um, do you think Giselle will pull off her uh, plan to destroy the will of her um, father? What? <laughs> <laughs> ultimately by the end of the season do you think giselle will be able to pull off I you said her... Karen. oh no i'm sorry do you think giselle will be able to pull off her plan to destroy the last will of her father do you think she'll get to yes okay good all right <laughs> me too let's hope that there's resolution to the end of the season but really you know little turtle cuties villa rosa vips i say it every week but like enjoy the potomac experience right yeah. now it's like bravo is not you know it's like this is a bounty that we're being offered and like i just don't last season i feel like you and i were really silly about like last season of potomac which was like great we just we couldn't fit it in yeah i'm like so glad that we're honoring potomac because it's just as good as orange county or even beverly hills up to this point you know yeah uh speaking of beverly hills um this episode was called twisted sisterhood what did that make you think of um the band Twisted Sister. Me too. What's his name? D. Snyder. Yeah. Uh, um, we're icon not... of the parental advisory sticker drama versus Tipper Gore. Oh, I forgot about that. He showed up in court and he goes, we're not gonna take it. And Tipper Gore, you should have seen her face. She, she goes, like, no! her, <laughs> she had a monocle on. It <laughs> fell off. It shattered in the courtroom. And they, and then they, the judge said, your honor, I object. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the judge ripped off his robes and was wearing a leather vest. <laughs> We're not going to take it. God, don't get me started on parental advisory stickers. Um, basically, every album has one. Unless you don't curse. Yeah. Taylor, does Taylor Swift have them? Yeah, because she says damn. And she says hella. Does she and say mf She says shite. And then she says, um, fuck. No, I, I, oh, yeah. she probably... Fuck the patriarchy? She says that, doesn't she? Fuck the patriarchy. Yeah, sometimes artists, when they don't want to say fuck, they just go, fuck the patriarchy. And you have to, like, they do it half-hearted. So it's not a full-blown, like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a sister, Beverly Hills. I can't believe you and I are ripping. We're ripping. <laughs> um, this episode was okay. Yeah. Um... Not not great. I am trying to know why it wasn't great. I think it's just because there's nothing new going on. It's yeah. kind of part two of the Dorit and Kyle thing. Yeah. And nothing really is bubbling up. And also Kathy kind of just made a really good functional trip. And everybody's kind of just like, 
enjoying the trip for the mm-hmm. most part. You know, it's like not an opportunity for anybody to create new chaos i think yeah i think the kyle and jareet drama just is a little boring because yes. we already know what it is this is what the third episode in a row that we're talking about it yeah and we're just bringing up the tit for tats like dorit brings up that um she made a joke about kyle's fashion show and then kyle didn't talk to her for six months and all the other women are like damn we're going back that far like we're just gonna keep going through the archive to see every rude thing you've ever said. And, and, and she brings up, I was glad to see a Buca de Beppo. She goes, yes. uh, when I created a, the, the <laughs> Buca de Beppo, what was the Capri room called? Room. When I co- completed the Capri room at Buca de Beppo, I don't remember a singing endorsement from you. <laughs> and then they showed Kyle making fun of it, making fun of yeah, it. Yeah, Which bit. I'm like, yeah, we cannot be doing this. We cannot go through every snarky confessional moment of all time. Like that is just the name of the game. Um, You know, Kyle reminds us that her best friend did die and she went through a separation like during that time and right after. So she's like, give me a break. Um, And Dorit's like, you've pushed me too far. Yes, totally. But there's a little bit of like the steam is blowing out of Dorit's ears. And by the end of it, like she's like, I got all my steam out. I can't keep up this, um, you know. Not ruse, but just like this energy. Yeah. I don't hate Kyle. We're just spinning our wheels. Like by the end of this, I was like, oh, I know this is coming to an end. Yeah. It's like you guys are, are it's gone too far. <laughs> I do love that Dorit keeps trying to pull Erica into it. She's yeah. like, well, what about what she said? Were you mad at her? And she's like, no, I knew what she meant. And she apologized. So it was fine. <laughs> yeah. She keeps doing that. Um, there was a funny Garcelle moment. I won't rehash the like lines or the dialogue or whatever, but it was almost like it was really funny. Like Garcelle has to chip in and say like, I also don't think Dorit is very good at apologizing. Doesn't mean what she says or whatever. Yeah. And then her and Dorit have a back and forth or whatever. And Dorit was like, I don't expect you to ever think anything good of me because I know that I'm not your favorite person. Like yeah. the cold war between Garcelle and Dorit is kind of wild. I know. And never addressed. Yeah. I feel like Garcelle, if she just doesn't like you, she doesn't like you. Yeah. Like, that's it. Yeah. You know? And I, I don't think it'll ever like you can, you can't really repair it with uh, Garcelle. Yeah. And she gets up and storms away. Um, and, uh, I don't know, Jennifer Tilly is like, I low key enjoyed that whole thing. Like it was like, uh, Kathy's like, it was like watching tennis. Yes. And then the editors do a really funny thing where it's going back and forth <laughs> and you hear the, the plop of a tennis ball. Yeah. Oh my God. Must bring up that, uh, Kyle calls out Kathy because Kathy was like, do you have a toothbrush? And when, uh, <laughs> when she went into her room, she was brushing her teeth with a makeup brush. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, right. This what? chick is crazy. I think so, too. I was like, wow, of all the things you could use to brush your teeth. <laughs> but I was glad she was brushing them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also like, the hotel definitely has a toothbrush. Of course. Dog. Like, yeah. a Motel 6 would give you a toothbrush. Yeah. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe Kathy's like, this is going to be pretty silly if you see <laughs> yeah. me doing this. Um, she also, when, so they drive to a boat and they're, the, chef on the boat is grilling lobster and kathy's like you got to put it on the top rack uh, so it doesn't overcook or whatever and they're like he's literally a chef yeah like, hello yeah and kyle was like kathy will boss anybody around about anything she'll say put salt on it she'll say remove the lobster claws so we don't have to eat them um i the boat trip was kind of fun mainly my favorite aspect of it overall was that sutton absolutely had heart eyes for this man named Captain Theo. I was like, that guy? It was awesome. I was like, I've never seen Sutton very excited and attracted to someone. She wouldn't stop talking about it. She was like, he can pull, uh, put, park his ship in my harbor. It was so cool. She goes, big biceps, check. Beautiful voice, check. And then they give this wonderful edit where Captain Theo is is talking about stuff. And they give it that, that swooning edit. And he's going, um... Please don't put toilet paper in our toilets. It'll completely clog the system and we'll have to go back to shore. But it has it, you know, it's like Sutton longingly looking at him. Yeah. 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 Did you what would what did you think about Captain Theo? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have thought twice if they didn't play it up. Like it was I was really surprised, but happy for her. Hope M- hope he calls. Me too. And I like, you know, what eventually ends up happening. Um there there's it's kind of, you know, what what was remarkable to you <laughs> during well, this boat trip? Dorit and Kyle have a heart to heart with the group. They uh, Kyle cries saying they've both been through a lot, 
um, which you would think would have happened sooner, honestly. Uh, you know, she's crying, saying, you know, uh, our husbands are closer than ever and we're so far apart. Um, and I'm just like, yeah, just cheers and move on. Um, then they sort of split off and Dorit and Sutton are talking about divorce because Sutton is like trying to be the divorce helper to everyone. She's like, my divorce took three years. Um, Dorit's like, I feel super lonely and vulnerable. And Sutton's like, well, you know, the second you decide to make that decision, I will be for, here for you, like, whenever you need. And then upstairs, Garcelle and Kyle are having a similar conversation. Garcelle gives a rare vulnerable moment. Mm -hmm. She cries and says she's dealing with, like, future empty nest. What's next for her? And I did like this because Kyle's like, that's exactly what I've been going through. Like, hello like you guys have been like <laughs> i mean she didn't say this but i'm like it's funny that everyone was like what the fuck is going on with kyle and now yeah. they're all entering a new phase where they're like what's my life gonna be and it's like yeah that was her like one year ago yeah yeah i, I kyle was being very honest i liked it she was like i had i was imagining world like traveling around the world with mauricio and like being yeah. in bed with him until i die and now that is that might completely not be available to me now i thought that was a sweet moment yeah um she tells garcelle that pk still reaches out to her and garcelle is shocked and i was like oh we're not done with this uh storyline which i'm like that's not that weird to me like they're friends i mean it's weird that it was weird up until kyle hadn't talked to dorit because it's like oh you're only going to talk to one and not the other but it's kind of like i mean Kyle's not fucking PK. Like, who cares? Yeah, no. I I thought it was like um, click. I thought it was clickbait. I was like, it makes complete sense. PK likes Kyle a lot They're too. Both sober. Yeah, and it's it, like, why? Like, why wouldn't he continue his friendship? But when that that clip, when that uh clip comes out with no context they may they're teasing it like PK is flirting with Kyle. Right. Like that he wants. You know, to like a lot of people online very much go with the idea that. Dorit and Mauricio fucked. Really? Like, that's, like, a thing. When? Like, that's part of the breakup, maybe? Could you imagine? That just, like, color me fucking shocked. I just, like, can't even entertain that for a second. It seems so ridiculous. Do you think they have sexual chemistry? No. Hmm. Do you? Let me think about them for... No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so there was that. Um, oh, you know what? We didn't mention this. I think I have to mention it right now, unless we already did. That would be horrible. But um, you know Carlos King, the executive, former executive producer of Atlanta? Okay. He started a podcast. He said he whispered into the universe that the whole PK and Dorit storyline is fabricated because Dorit sensed the diamond was fading away right. out of her hand yeah. because she's kind of been on the periphery for a long time. So that her and PK devised a strategy to have a relevant, engaging storyline. And that's also why she's making a complete meal out of the Kyle shit. Because she sensed that their only income that her and PK are going to have in life would be for this show. Why did he think this? He said this is the whispers he got from the Bravo network. Oh. But And then he said that, well, this, this is complete. I'm just putting this out there this it, totally blame carlos king he said it um but he also said that that's why kyle reacted like she goes why dorit are you acting like this in that first episode because uh -huh. kyle was legitimately shocked thinking that dorit was like adopting a persona a, uh -huh. a fake presence like and, and she was shocked by it like trying to call attention to the audience to know that dorit is not acting like herself and right. there's something odd here yeah, but she said that again on uh this week's episode where she was like i don't know who that is yes or whatever um so interesting um also we got a little tease of Bose talking about her boyfriend which i'm like would love to see more of that and then her and jennifer bond over dating liars yes um and she's like uh jennifer is like i used to go out with this guy and he would never uh be able to pay so i would give him my credit card under the table so he could pretend to pay <laughs> yeah um yeah a full she said a full grifter yeah he was an interior designer who said like he goes check me out in a couple weeks i'm gonna have a billboard of my face on sunset <laughs> boulevard and also vanity fair is writing a huge article on me but then he had no i guess he couldn't even pay for dinner That's or whatever scary. and she dated him for like a year jesus I saw um, a roundup. I don't remember which account it was on, but it was like 10 photos of Jennifer Tilly playing poker over the years. Whoa. And I was like, I love this. Like, she's such a funny figure. Like, she's so cool. Imagine the story she could tell. Yeah. My sister was in Psycho 2. <laughs> 
right? Playing the niece of Janet Lee from Psycho 1. The story she could tell about Jim Carrey. From right? Liar Liar. On the set of Liar Liar. Yeah, so I, I think that Jennifer Tilly, like, I can't wait to hear just more random anecdotes from a life in Hollywood. Totally. You know? I would read her book if she had one. Me too. The Sam Simon thing, I was like, you have a chunk or a piece of The Simpsons? She's so rich. Um. So then, yeah, the captain then, uh, I forget who asked him, but they're like, Sutton's a foot is fucked up. Kathy's uh, being cute. Carry her down the stairs. Yeah. And then Dorit gives the captain Sutton's number and is like, give her a call. I thought that Captain Theo almost dropped Sutton in the water because he kind of um, (laughs) shuffles a little bit. But in actuality, that was him just hopping over from the boat to the dock, which is always kind of a scary (laughs) step. So he didn't even come close to dropping her. Good. Because that would have been so bad. Could you imagine if Sutton liked Captain Theo and then he almost slipped going down the stairs (laughs) with her? He threw her in the ocean. Um, Then at dinner, they're talking about like nudes and uh, Kathy's like, I have some nudes in our uh, at the bank in the vault. Or yeah. she says she goes in the vault and then she goes at the bank. And I want I was like that when she first said vault, I feel like she was like at the bank because she was like, don't rob us and take my nudes from our vault. Totally. <laughs> to stop people who would rob them from getting the secret. Uh, um, the Caesar's Palace mirror yeah. nudes. She said that they, her and Rick just went three weeks ago to Caesar's Palace oh, and took those photos. Um, she said The that Golden it, Nugget also has mirrored ceilings, just so you know. Really? Ha- oh, I, thank you for telling me. Um, so she said that that's the most, the sexiest photo you can take. Which, are, are we going to, can I say it? No, I shouldn't say it. But um, uh, if we go to Vegas... We're not saying it's Caesars. Oh, okay. Shit. Well, she said that this- <laughs> It was too expensive. It was crazy. It was like triple the price for some reason. Is it a Caesars? It must be a Hilton Enterprise, right? Uh, Cause, good cause, question. Because I was like, you just give the biggest shout out to Caesars. Everybody who wants to take naked photos with their significant other is going to race to Caesars. Yeah. I'm su- I mean, that would be wild. No, but you know what? No, they have that, they have that other one that they made everybody go to. Like that new oh, Hilton right. Hotel. Yeah, they own the- um, yeah, that's that was called the, the Conrad Rick. or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but she, I think, I thought that was an interesting endorsement. She goes, "The sexiest photos you can ever take with your husband or wife or someone you're having sex with is at Caesars in that mirrored room when you're staring up um, in bed." Yes, I think Caesars is its own group. By the way, I just googled it. It's what? Its own group. Oh, so Caesars. Yeah. So she, that was just a free publicity. Wow. Maybe they're friends of. Um, but yeah, I stayed at the Conrad and it was nice. It's like brand new. Okay. Resorts I w- World. I, I went oh Resorts World. Yeah. I went to the I went to the Resorts World like buff not buffet, like the place where all of the food food court. Uh-huh. And it was I was like, whoa. It was like kind of like a tour around the world. Yeah. It's a little down strip. Yes. I Anyways. like this moment. Um we get a little uh thing at the table where um uh, Garcelle wants a little piece yeah. of Dorit. <laughs> She's like, and by the way. And another thing, why the hell did you repost a video where you're rocking your ass off with the John Cougar Mellencamp, ta- Teddy's dad, when you just said, which we didn't say, <laughs> that, t- that Dorit tried to distance herself from Teddy and said, mm-hmm. me and Teddy are actually, we're friends, but we're not very close. Yeah. And Garcelle says, that's interesting. Then why the hell would you post a video of you rocking out with her dad? Yeah. I mean, my immediate thought is that she thinks it's cool that she was on stage with John Cougar Mellencamp and yeah. wanted to brag about it. What song do you think they were singing? Um... <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Uh, uh, hold on. Well, I'll look it up. Little but... Diddy. Is that him? Little Diddy. It says no song. Hurts so good? I don't oh, know any... Man. So good. Oh. Sometimes love don't feel like it should. Is he? A, I, oh, Jack and Diane is him. That little ditty. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. What's hurt so good? I just sing it. Oh wait. Oh, I'm sorry. He has Jack and Diane and and hurt so good listed twice. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know any John Cougar Mellencamp song. But then I wanted to ask you: Do you either concur with Dorit or concur with Kyle? Where Kyle said. Um, Dorit said, I'm doing John Cougar a favor by reposting him. <laughs> do you agree with Kyle that John Cougar needs no favors from Beverly Hills or Dorit? Or do you think Mellencamp, John Cougar. Hashtag Mellencamp needs favors. Hashtag <laughs> Mellencamp good to go. Yeah. 
where do you i almost was like i don't know any john cougar mellencamp songs and i don't know how popular he is so i could imagine a world where she thought she was throwing <laughs> cougar a, mel- a bone <laughs> throwing him a melon well i'm like my mind immediately went to pk is in the music biz True. i feel like boy george Dury is like i get it let's help boost the sales like I would PK would need the similar favor. Yeah, you know what I mean. It just it just depends on how popular John Cougar Mellencamp is. I also think who gives a shit. Like I literally don't care. Like, do you know how easy it is when you're tagged in a story to say add to stories? So it's a little bit like Garcelle. Do we need to bring this to the forefront? No, it's like who gives a fuck? Like Housewives post like thirty stories a day. Like who gives a shit? Yeah, I agree. But then, and then Garcelle kind of, I, she said what I was thinking. She goes, Teddy is going to absolutely love this. And I was like, well, I was like, she is. Teddy is, is like a pig in shit right now, <laughs> but you brought her up. So you yeah. added Teddy to the storyline of this season. That's true. Um, she also threw out a jab about uh, Sutton's kitty sweater again, which I'm like, I will never understand. Maybe am I the odd man out that I think that sweater was cute? I see no issue with it. We said it was whatsoever. so. Whatsoever. We said it was so cool at the time. We were the lone podcast supporting it. And also, I swear, I think Erica wore yes. a similar sweater, like uh, embodying that same fashion yes. aesthetic. So Yeah, I mean, I get the like, don't bring up your neuropathy, but like the sweater was fine, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Sutton is kind of behaving like a sinner diamond holder at this dinner. She goes, I wrote up a huge speech. And this isn't even Sutton's trip. Right. It's Kathy's trip. That's true. But Sutton goes, I'm going to say everything. And I do feel like Doree and Kyle are glancing to the side when Sutton does stuff like this because there is some tension with who is the most powerful Beverly Hills cast yeah. member. Sutton definitely came from the bottom and is yeah. now bordering in the top three or top four. Sutton decides to give a speech about sisterhood, which is where that title comes from. And she goes, truth and openness or, or honesty yes. and, and openness are the two twin virtues for a sister. And so let us all adhere to those principles for the rest of our lives. This is a sisterhood. Now let us wrap a blue ribbon around us to signify this. Yes. She also, she was on Watch What Happens Live and she gave a very like grounded moment of um, respect to Mary Cosby and was like, the housewives are sisterhood. And Mary embodied that when she was honest about her son and it made me proud to be part of the sisterhood. And I was, I mean, it was like nice what she said, but I was like, what's this like jag you're on about? Like, yeah. Is she trying to like rebrand the housewives to be positive or something? S- Sutton's law. Yeah. It was just a little like, I'm like, you're really on like a tear here with this idea. Yeah. I liked what Bo said. Bose was killing it with She's just funny. lines. Like she goes, um, I don't know what the hell Sutton is whispering under her breath right now. I might be Mrs. Sutton. Like, you know, like, may, like maybe Sutton was doing a incantation to wed Bose. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I like her. Um, and then she does it again on, like, the bus on the way to the PJ, which I didn't realize they were taking a PJ back from Oceanside. I didn't even know that was possible. I know. Uh, I, it's, that seems like a drive to ridiculous. me. Um, and she says it again. She's like, we need to be open and honest in this group. Um, and she's like, I noticed that Erica at dinner said something under her breath about the, the Teddy friendship thing. And Dorit's like, I'm not close with Teddy. And uh, then like Dorit and Sutton, I don't even like, I like blinked and like they were fighting and Dorit was yelling. And I was like, what is even happening? I didn't understand. It was a little bit of a mess. Yeah. Um, it was like Sutton was mad at Erica for talking shit behind Dorit's back. But I didn't even think Erica was talking shit about Dorit's back. I thought she was just saying that like that Dorit never said how close her and Teddy were or whatever. She basically whispered in her breath. I don't think that's what she said. Yeah, and it was just like, it wasn't that, I don't know what Sutton was thinking um, when she- Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things where it's like, if you're the one that is being talked about and you catch it out of the corner of your eye, you can be like, what are you saying, Erica? Or like, do you have something to add? Like, but if that doesn't happen in the moment, then like, move fucking on. Yeah, don't sleep on it and bring it up. But then Dorit starts to like, elevate to a degree uh, that was unprompted, I thought, screaming. And then they just have a fight and you, it's like- I don't, it, what, they're, I don't even know if they're going to continue this. It was just like, okay, Sutton and Dorit are bad now again. Right, yeah. Um, Sutton, or Dorit sort of like storms off the bus or whatever. And they 
get onto the PJ. And then it seems like next week, uh, it seems like all the cities are going to have a theme next week, or at least Potomac and Beverly Hills. There's a cowgirl party at Kyle's with like a fucking Bronco and Camille Grammer is there and Dorit calls her the C word. Oh, wow. I saw that. And I was excited to see Camille again. It's nice that she gets invited to one party a year. The queen of pernicious herself. Yep. Um, so that looks good. Um, so what was your favorite of these episodes? <laughs> um, it was kind of fun watching Roni together and just being shocked that like mm-hmm. it was flopping so hard. Um, I mean, it's almost done, right? He's doing the reunion. Like he's this week and he something. said there is a reunion but <laughs> we don't truly know Can it be one part that would be like so satisfying one part i mean they've There's never nothing done to one. talk about uh, it cannot be more than two it can't be more than two what would it what are i mean is this it's so bad is it bad content to Do you talk think he's about? gonna be mean to them a little bit he's like, gonna be mad about bit? he's gonna be mad about the prank yeah. Rebecca Minkoff is going to come out for a, like a 10 minute segment, <laughs> I assume, right? Re- Re- Rebecca Minkoff. She, uh, does she have an apple? Oh, I don't I think. Don't know. No, she doesn't. She doesn't. Raquel got the apple. Oh, I see. Raquel's mom, whatever ends up being there, I know, Andy, you know, that will be huge. Yeah. Jenna being. Well, pl- all the, the abortion. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, there will have to be two because they're going to get into like the, the down and dirty or. <laughs> Like the serious topics, like yes. they'll probably talk about Bryn's, you know, yeah. thing that she shared, mm-hmm. what Aaron and Jenna shared, like that will take up a probably a decent amount of time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then all of the the leaky pigeon shit will take some time. Yeah. Um, ugh, I'm just like I need to move on with my life. I know, I know. It's been it's been a rough <laughs> season, but it's been fun looking over at you every once in a while and while we're talking about it and being like, what the hell were we? just yeah. watching there's something almost like whenever i set out to have to watch like yesterday i was like oh i have to watch three episodes and something about it was like roni's the easiest to watch because there's like no stakes right because it's just like nothing totally whereas the other ones i have to like pay attention and be like ooh, like that's interesting like that references this like the dynamic here whatever and with roni i'm just like I can like turn my brain off because yeah. I'm like, this is nothingness. Yeah. And the perfect example is the Uba Aaron stuff. Yeah. It's like, it means nothing. We know it's not real and it's not even worth talking about for one second. It's just bad and boring. Yeah. Um, so great. Well, I mean, I think people are going to go, where's the extra hour of turtle time? But guess what? Amy and I, I mean, we checked off all the boxes. We completed our homework. We did uh, the Tasmanian devil style, but that's, that's why we have to do. We just, uh, we're sharing online that during this period, we're going to do two episodes because there's five shows on right now and it's absolutely impossible to fit them all in one. So we're going to do two slightly shorter episodes instead of one three hour episode. So hopefully that works for you. If you want even more, as always, we shout out Patreon. So it'll be currently Patreon Monday, um, <laughs> Salt Lake and Southern Charm on Tuesday. And then Beverly Hills, Roni, and Potomac on Thursday with, you know, with the um, allowance to swap those around at will, uh, given our schedules. Yeah. But, but uh, that's our plan currently, at least like through the new year and this era. And then maybe if there's fewer shows on, we'll go back to just doing one long one. But it was just too much. Yeah. What a perfect content schedule. Monday. I need a pick me up. Vanderpump Rules. Vanderpump Rules. Hell yeah. That gets me to Tuesday. Whoa, I need more content to get me through Wednesday. And then, oh, Wednesday. I need a break. It's hump day. Um, I don't need any new content. What the hell? Thursday's coming up. I need to pick me up to last me through the rest of the week. Friday, no new content, please. Right? Isn't it perfect? That sounds like true. <laughs> <laughs> and so then hopefully la- you're not sick of us but yeah. la- yes and then lastly it's december 12th thursday december 12th that means santa is gearing up his sleigh he's packing up a bunch of things that need wrapping paper before he puts them in his sleigh and he's going i hope nobody gets a last minute gift because i'm filling my sleigh up with gifts so 
I would say now is probably the last time to get your gift to the North Pole, yeah. to Santa Claus. And if you want a Bravo-centric gift for that loved one in your life where you have no clue what to get them, go to the Turtle Time Etsy store and look at all this Bravo merchandise that we have. I swear, if even someone for one second likes Karen Huger and they said, I love Karen. Well, there's a shirt <laughs> with her face all over it at the Turtle Time uh, Etsy shop. So... <laughs> So please get that. I'm always gagged by how good our merch is. It's just, I mean, I would, I wish, I mean, we should just shell out because I wish that I had every single one. Like, I just like hate paying for stuff, but I'm like, I wish that I had one of each. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Could you imagine? Like, I think my mom likes Kim Zolziak. Why don't I just get her a shirt with Kim Zolziak's face all over it? Yeah. We have an. Dorinda like our answer to an ugly Christmas sweater that's a bunch of pictures of Dorinda at Christmas like wear that to your Christmas party please (laughs) we have an ornament we have a West Wilson shirt that he loves yeah this will get Amy and I out of the hawk to a the hawk to a um uh, hole that we dug with the crypto so we should create a golden coin um like how Trump sells coins oh my god he also is selling a fragrance right now I know I saw it. it's called fight 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 we should make like turtle 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 like shit (laughs) what's the shittiest thing we can sell that we package it in a way that where it's twenty dollars and people would still buy it turtle scent all right. Okay. All right. Uh, Amy and I are going to bid each other adieu, and we're going to bid you all adieu as well. We're going to say goodnight, and um, please continue on the turtle time journey. I hope you're gearing up for the holidays and you have fun, but we'll be back next week with even more turtle time episodes. Goodbye. Farewell. Farewell. Farewell.